Good morning. So the plan today is to make our way slowly back to Ottawa. I want to head to Kingston where I've aligned a few Airbnb gigs and then I'm going to make my way up to my hometown of Kenville and probably spend the night there and then head to Ottawa tomorrow. So I thought this would be a good chance for me to go into detail about how I work for Airbnb and how anyone who is uh, got a decent photographer's eye, a basic camera and an ultra wide angle lens and a tripod can work for Airbnb too. So the way this works and the why it's such a great job for uh, travelers or for nomadic people is because you can set your home point to anywhere that you can legally work. So in my case, anywhere in Canada, I can just drop my pin and Airbnb will start assigning me photo gigs. Now, the way these work, unfortunately, is that a lot of the time when I drop a pin in an area, I'll get a lot of gigs that were reassigned a long time ago and no photographer has been in the area to shoot them. So as a result, a lot of the gigs we get um, at first are always um, reassigned and people don't necessarily apply because they're not necessarily running their account anymore. Um, because of that, you're going to want to start canvassing an area or some, because of that, you're going to want to drop your pin in an area about a week beforehand, usually, because for units that don't reply, I give them about 48 hours at the 24 hour mark after I send them a message. If they don't reply, I'll send them another message asking them, are they still interested? And if I don't get a reply again within 24 hours, I close the ticket. Um, I have to do this to the vast majority of tickets, especially when I'm traveling. Once I, I pick a spot and stay there for a while, it's a lot easier. I tend to book a lot more of the shoots. The way this works, though, is when I drop my pin, as long as they're not already reassigned shoots, the people who are hosting in that area can uh, request a photographer as long as there's a budget for photographers in that area. Now, Airbnb being the massive company that it is today, there's usually a budget. So that means that they can request photography. They don't have to pay for it. Airbnb pays you and then they pay you 25 cents per mile from where you set your home point to where the uh, gig happens. So that usually ends up to be an extra dollar or two, um, usually, not very much. Major upside to this kind of work is it can be done really quickly. So this is a kind of job that I can go in, I can shoot the whole place in 15 minutes, I can take it out to the van, load it on my computer and edit it in 15 minutes and upload it next time I have Wi-Fi. This means that for 30 minutes worth of work, plus about another 15 minutes worth of booking and, and emailing and stuff like that, um, and only 15 of those minutes are actually on site, I can make a decent amount of money. So as you can tell from the drive-in, not exactly what you'd call in Kingston. This is definitely a rural property, but that's cool. You know, Ontario's got loads of these neato cottages that you can see, and uh, the advantage is they're a lot prettier than a lot of the uh, inner city spots, and they got a lot more square footage. So we're gonna get some fantastic photos today, and I'll show you how I do that. Airbnb has a very strict style guide, and that style guide helps you kind of pick locations at four, about four feet off the ground, always shooting level and shooting into the corner of the room. Now for exposure, what I'll do is because this is a D810 full frame, I mean, this is a little overkill, but it's got great dynamic range in it. So I don't have to do as much post work because of that, which is really handy for me. Um, I'm shooting with a Tokina 16 to 28 millimeter 2.8 ultra wide lens. Um, ultra wide, not fisheye. That's very important. So what I'll do is I'll shoot, in this case, three exposures, one minus one EV, one at zero, and one at one plus EV. And from there, I'll have way more data than I really need to go into post-processing. So I'll move through the room doing exactly this. So because I'm shooting on a light stand, because Shelby has my tripod, I put it on self-timer, and I set it to take three exposures, and it's going to take one, minus one EV, one regular, and one plus one EV. This gives me a nice dynamic range to work with. If there's any details I need to pull out of some higher exposures or lower exposures, I'm shooting on raw. Usually what I'll take is the bright exposure, pull back some of those highlights just to get something out of the windows, and uh, I'll brighten up some of the corners, and because I'm shooting on this D810, which has such fantastic dynamic range, I don't really need to pull in any Photoshop to uh, cut in any of the details on the highlights because usually my camera can get it all in one exposure. Every once in a while I can't and I'll go into Photoshop, I'll do an old school version of HDR. 
So it's not like it's not like you see on your cell phone or a filter or whatever. It's I'm cutting in ex different exposure. So I'll cut in one from this exposure, for instance, and I would cut the windows in and I would stitch them into this exposure so that I get an even exposure between inside and outside. Sometimes you have to do that, um, especially if you have a camera that doesn't have uh, the same dynamic range as this thing. But this thing is like three and a half thousand dollars. So, I mean, is it worth it for Airbnb? Definitely not. This is totally overkill. You can do this with a much, much cheaper camera, but uh, it's what I happen to have for work. So uh, I'm going to make full use of it. I'd like to also note that I'm using um, my metering built into the camera because I do trust it. It does a pretty good job, but I do have to go back and check every once in a while just to make sure everything's running well. I also use auto white balance. Um, I can tweak it in post, but auto white balance usually gets me nice and close and I don't have to tweak too much further than that unless I'm shooting like a bright orange room or something like that. Sometimes I'll get weird effects there. Um, I shoot a 5.6 or higher usually um, and I'll drag my shutter speed before I bump up my ISO or I bump up uh, or drop down my aperture. So that's why a tripod is very, very crucial in this kind of work. Other rules for Airbnb include turning the TVs off lowering the toilet seat, um, shooting above the level of surfaces like counters and tables, so you want to always make sure you're a little bit above that, and uh, you always want to make sure you get at least one very good clean shot of where the person is actually sleeping, so the full shot you want to see the whole bed. Shooting bathrooms is especially difficult, especially considering Airbnb only accepts photos shot in landscape, not portrait. Airbnb used to accept diptychs where I could put one portrait shot next to a port another portrait shot with a white line in between and submit it as one photo. Uh, however, they don't do that anymore. And it's mainly because of the way that the photos look on the website. They want to make sure there's a consistent, flowing, professional look to all the photos. So because of that, I really do suggest getting an ultra-wide angle lens. Um, I am a huge fan of what Tokina has done in this market. Uh, the Tokina 11 to 16 for crop sensor cameras was what I was using for a long, long time, shooting on a D7000. Um, that lens served me super, super well, and so well, in fact, that when my order of a 20 millimeter f1.8 from Nikon got back ordered, first thing I did was cancel the order and buy a Tokina 16 to 28. So uh, I find the lens gives very good results um, for this kind of work and it uh, does a really good job of pushing the center of the frame back and pulling the sides of the frame out and giving you nice, crisp, straight lines. This uh, makes real estate look fantastic. Now, some photographers prefer to use flashes. I prefer natural light, and that's why when I book a shoot with a client, I always remind them to check for any dead light bulbs. It's a huge, huge, huge benefit. So you can see this entire style guide for Airbnb when you start working for them and you can apply to work for Airbnb by um, sending in a portfolio full of real estate style photos and I would suggest going to the website, taking a look at what's already there and mimicking that style. Um, send that in to their uh, photo recruitment email that they have, it's on the website and uh, from there it's actually fairly easy to uh, work on the road. All right, shoot is over. I'm gonna make some lunch and then we'll get to editing. For lunch today, we are doing baguette sandwiches with uh, onions, some spinach dip leftovers, lettuce, tomatoes, and Genoa salami. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right, Genoa? I always say Genoa, that's probably wrong.
cap off the night, I decided to swing by Kempville, which is my hometown. Basically, everyone I know from Kempville has moved on to Ottawa or to other cities and done other things. Except my housemate, who I met in Ottawa, who moved back to Kempville. So, hanging out at his place tonight. I make some food in a full-size kitchen and catch up. Okay, Jeremy informed me today that I had an old debt. Um, then he, he owed me an old, old, old debt from way, way back. And I had totally forgotten about it because I'm bad with money. And uh, today he just presented me with this touch-sensitive little laptop. So we're going to use this in a van and uh, as a sketchbook and whatever else I can manage to do with it. That's so cool. A debt I didn't know I had. But a nerd who gave me a, a cool laptop. You're the best.